Ladies and gentlemen, this is another episode of the Peterson's Farms podcast. We are talking to an employee of Peterson's today. This guy, uh, you've heard his voice before. It's not the first time you're going to hear from Mr. Ben Warren. Ben, thanks for coming on, being uh, willing to share your story with our listeners and give people insight into the team at Peterson's, what, you know, what you're all about, what, what makes you human, what makes our brand human, what makes our company human. So let's explore some of that. Sounds good. I think where I'd like to start is just give everybody a baseline about like kind of where your career, I kind of want, I almost want to say, tell us where you come from, but that's really probably too far back. What is your work life been like? What is how did your career kind of take off or get started? Paint that picture for everybody. Sure. Um, I kind of finished up my college degree in 2008 at the pit of the recession, and uh, jobs were kind of tough to come by. Um, so I caught a I got a job at uh, a couple of retail stores, and finally I got a job at Whole Foods. Um, uh, in the meat department and work my way up from a part-time employee to running the departments. And I moved around to a couple other departments and, um, you know, uh, that, that life was, it was not working great for me after a while. It was, it had been a great company for me. They treated me real well. I'd moved up. It had been a great, uh, career builder. Um, but I wanted something a little different and, uh, so I left Whole Foods and I worked for a company here in Denver, that a meat company here in Denver as the general manager for their butcher shop. And that started out a little rough and I kind of left there too. And um, fortunately, I had worked with a guy on the, on the sales team at, at Whole Foods and I kind of talked to him and it's at that point, they had said, uh, he had said, oh, we're looking for a demo person in Colorado. And... Uh, your timing worked out great for that. And uh, that was a great gig for about a month and a half. Yeah. Uh, You've had the most dynamic <laughs> career of anybody. Uh, it's possible, <laughs> right? And well, look, listen, we haven't even, well, but we haven't even got to the real crazy stuff yet. Anyways, you keep finishing your, your story. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I, I, I have a very, uh, vivid memory of i think it was like march 17th or maybe that weekend before i was i was demoing at a whole foods here in colorado and like you could just tell the world was going crazy the shelves at that particular whole foods were just being emptied as fast as the the, the people in that department could refill them and they were just running out of product and i'm sitting here demoing bacon and sausage and just watching all this just like this is craziness and then i by the time i had left that store at the end of the demo, I got an email from Peterson saying Whole Foods shut it down. Everybody else is shutting it down. And like, that was it. And it was kind of a weird, uh, you know, moment because it's like, oh, man, what does that mean? You know, um, but a funny thing is, I mean, my current job is retail marketing manager and my degree is in marketing, but an extremely circuitous route to that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, you went around the block yeah. to come back to where you started, but marketing is, is such a, a dynamic, beautiful piece of our business that I, I think that trip around the block turned out to be only just great experience for understanding marketing in our industry. I mean, I think it gave me a really valuable view into kind of a lot of different facets of the meat industry and, and you know, both from a consumer perspective and the retailer perspective. And then, of course, the, the producer, the manufacturer perspective. And I mean, I don't see how that couldn't help in the job. Yeah. You know. So what I think is really cool about your journey and so, you know. Almost every conversation from this point forward could have an aspect of the pandemic, right? The, the COVID and all that. Like, it's one of those life changing things. I can remember telling my wife, ah, this will be over. Kids won't even remember it. She looked at me square in the eyes and said, they will not forget this. 
you know, I think she was right, you know. <laughs> Anyways, so I like the idea of telling this piece of Ben's story that he might not tell so well, right? Because I want everybody else to know this guy is a gamer. I mean, he's willing to do what it takes in the company, within the team to help, to be successful. That is so cool. So picture demoing bacon sausage ham coming out of the meat business, you know, and this is what Ben did to now going on whole 30 diets, filming Instagram <laughs> lives, you know, just totally flip that script into, Oh, now I'm doing this all digitally. Like, I've done it with people live and in their face. Now it's a camera, which we've all went through that a little bit. Just these Zoom calls are is a piece is kind of similar. What tell everybody a little bit about what that feels like to just really go from kind of I don't think you would even mind this. You're more of an introvert, shy kind of guy to to having the pressure of being in a job role now that requires more in front of the camera, in front of the people, truth. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would say, um, you know, uh, it's been a learning experience, but I like that. I, I really enjoy that part of it. I like learning how to do new things. And I mean, the, the getting out of your comfort zone thing, like filming Instagram things is, so is, uh, the best way to learn something fast, right? You're going to make mistakes. You're not going to do it the best possible way, but then somebody's going to give you a piece of feedback that says, check out this angle from your phone or something like you did early on with the thing. And, and those kind of things are super helpful. And then you learn how to do it. And then additionally, it teaches you some empathy, some understanding for the people that you work with who do that kind of thing all the time and like understand how challenging that can be. And it gives you the ability to, to like look like an example would be to label design, right? Like I don't know the first thing about label design before I came in this and we're working on a couple of them and I've really come to understand the challenges of the graphic designer, you know, and like the things that, that they don't, you don't know they need until they tell you, right? And like the and and that whole thing is it, it's been a great growing learning experience. And while I do would consider myself an introvert, I I like teams of people. I like working with teams of people. I like being around other people who have different perspectives than I do too, because I think it makes things more interesting. Like I think uh, you know two heads are better than one, especially if they don't think the same way, you know, and I think there's a, a lot of, and I think one of the things that this company values is that different perspective, right? And like the, a different view on things. And I think, um, you know, I'm sure you, like you just said, I, I took on a lot of different challenges and everything, but I would say lots of people in our company have done that through the thing. And like, I know you've talked to Robin already and Robin's another person that got kind of thrust into a role that she was not necessarily familiar with, but man, she's taken that bull by the horns and done such an amazing job with it. That's so. right. I mean, I, I would, I'm proud of that. Like personally, as a leader in the organization, I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of the people. I'm proud of the personalities. I'm proud of the grit within our team. I mean, the facts are you don't survive within our team if you don't have those things because it won't feel good to you. It's not going to go away. Yeah, I mean, we're we're very imperfect and we need to be getting better on, on all fronts in a lot of ways. But there's some kind of just core truths about being on the Peterson's team and, and some of those are them. All right, so tell everybody a little bit about Whole30, right? Like our products lend themselves toward a Whole30 community, toward a better for you community, uh, you know, somebody interested in a better for you kind of diet really is not the right, right word. It's lifestyle. You did one. We, we've kind of documented it as a resource for our community. So now on the podcast, tell everybody what that was like for you and are you still eating that way now we're let's see if a week or so past the january whole 30 i'm interested like how's it going what are you up to sure, yeah 
Um, it was definitely a learning experience. And I got to say, when I joined this company, that was nowhere near my uh, mind on how to do like that was not I, I wasn't interested. But kind of as we as we got closer to January, I was and after interviewing with Melissa, I was definitely more interested in giving it a go and seeing, you know, not only because I wanted to learn more about my health, but like I like a good challenge and I wanted to see if I could do it. So kind of like you in the 75 heart. Um, so uh, I would say the um, the biggest things I learned were what I couldn't live without. Like what, what were the things I really missed when it was over? And then what were the things that I was like, yeah, I'm okay if I don't need much of this. Now, to be honest, the Super Bowl kind of threw me off of the whole thing. Hard to go through a Super Bowl Sunday without... By the way, stuff you how, do, how did you <laughs> like the game? It was a good game. I mean, yeah, it was it was. really. I I uh, I didn't necessarily have a dog in the fight. There are a bunch of people on the Rams. I wanted to see one at Super Bowl, but um, but I didn't really have a dog in the fight. It just I'm in for a good game, and it was a good game. I thought. I mean, if I was you know a mix of good offense and defense, which is always good. Sometimes you get those high scoring, everybody's scoring every time, or like those those ones with like the Ravens defenses where like right. nobody's scoring and they're really yeah. boring. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, so you you kind of said, what is the one thing you learned? Like, let's say the number one thing you learned you can't live without. Yeah, I just can't get past noodles, man. I just I love you know. What yeah, I mean? There like, you I go. Really All right. love noodles. <laughs> um, but pasta, Asian noodles, anything really. And uh, the thing I really didn't miss much was the sugar, like the sweets. I, I didn't miss them, and I, I I mean I've certainly had a couple of desserts since and stuff, but I'm not. I'm eating, still eating dried fruit. I'm still having tea after dinner to kind of squash that sweet tooth. And I I really, it's not like a I don't miss it. It's not a big deal. And uh, I think that is what it's learned to me is like, I can, I can, if I need to, I have the ability to be, to cut those things out of my diet if I need to, and if it's a health reason or something. I also think uh, one thing I got was like, I got better at cooking and, and knowing like flavor combinations and things that were good. I these the egg bakes on that. I would bake for a, on a, like a Saturday morning and they would last me the week. Those things have really helped and like, and not having a crutch of sugar or, you know, legumes or noodles. Like I can cook without those things and, and still have a pretty varied diet that has got lots of, you know, good stuff in it. So, man, you, you enlightened me seriously as we were kind of going through this January of 2022, my 75 hard journey, Becca's PCOS, yours whole, th your whole 30. And we would get together and talk about it. And it would just blow my mind that you cared so much about other people, your family specifically, enjoying the food. You know, you want it to be variety. You want it to be interesting and fun, right? I think I learned that from you. I learned that's more important than I make it in my life, right? So I think that's part of the value of these conversations. Like, I think, folks, if you're just... I think you should think about that truth that people will eat food and they want it to be an experience where some of us, me, for example, says, oh, the, the switch is tripped. Just feed me broccoli every meal. That's what I will eat. Right? Yeah, I, I find it so amazing that you can do that because, I mean, I totally admire it because it's not something I can do. And I also feel like it's a, uh, it's like that discipline to be able to go is sustenance now. That's what I'm doing it for. And like that is a, a switch I can't flip. And and I I mean I I admire people who have the discipline to be able to just go, I'm doing this. And then they yeah. do it. And, and see, and I admire you for the other, you know, it's that's what's so great about being on a team, having different humans in your life, because you find admiration in those things that you're not great at. <laughs> my, my wife and my kids and I, we talk a bit about like how people show love to each other and my wife and my kids, they know that the way I show love is feeding people. And that like, and that's a big part of it for me. And that was, that was a driving factor. And a part of it is a driving factor. It was just like, I'm a big guy and real, I don't have any real heart or like heart problems or, any real issues, but like, it's only a matter of time of toward a fella that big as me is going to have those problems, right? Joint problems, whatever. And like the idea behind all this is I want to be around 
to see my kids grow up. I want to run around to be a grandparent and like, I can't do that if I don't take control of how I deal with food. And so that do you think those 30 days have moved you in the right direction? Absolutely. I absolutely, because I think I know, I mean, one thing I learned was I lost 13 pounds, but I, I generally think my metabolism is just crazy slow. So like what I need to do to make it move forward is it's got to be a balance of exercise and food. Some people, my wife can do it solely with food. If she just changes the way she eats, portion control, things like that, she can lose that weight. And it's like not a big deal for her. She doesn't need to work out. And I really have to add in the exercise and that topic because I mean, I ate a clean diet for 30 days, super clean. And I lost weight, but not like, I mean, I know people who've lost like 30 pounds in that 30 days. And it's right. like, it's I, such I don't a even know how you can too. do it. Right. It's, it's like, Hey man, 13 is a win. It's still an awesome totally, win. But 100%, your brain will too, mess yeah. with you and say, mm-hmm. yeah, but somebody else did 30. You know, what's wrong? It's like, we've got to battle that. I'm the same way about some other thing, right? Like people aren't listening to this podcast. I must suck, right? That's not true. The podcast is awesome. The audience has not found it yet or whatever. It's like, I'm comparing it to, you know, comparison is just a bad idea. I mean, anybody who tells you they don't have those thoughts in their head, fooling you, or they're pretty narcissistic. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Let's Uh, say you're Ben Warren before you ever knew about Peterson's and you wanted to just tell him a thing about our company, our brand that would be valuable to him. I mean, here's a surprise question. You know, I'm like, come up with this off the top of your head. What would you tell him? Is there anything? Yeah. I mean, I think that one of the big differences is because, I mean, you know, there are other companies that do some things like we do. They do no sugar products or they do clean meat and stuff like that. But I think a big difference is a lot of our competitors or other companies that do what we do are are really big companies. And we got a group of people that are just, to me, it's the people is the difference of our company and how they treat other people, how they treat each other. Um, I mean, I know you've had Cody on here. He's such a, like a thoughtful guy, Cody, you know? And I think, I I just really think like he's clearly just being in meetings with him. He thinks about things before he says them. And he, and he, there's like, takes other people's perspectives and you, you do too. I've always admired that about you and, you know, Stacy too. And, um, I think, the company like we have all these people that we just talked about who do all that they just they're willing to take on work and they're willing to learn something new and i mean all these people we work with are eventually going to either stay with the company and make continue to make this company a great company or they're going to move on and and this company will have given them tools to be great oh, man. somewhere else right i'm so that- glad you said that because i was thinking that that exact thing i think it's our calling almost to 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 make people help people that you can't make anybody anything right they have to want it but uh, you can support them you can help them you can be bl- honest like i don't i try not to beat around the bush about how i feel about reviews or anything and i want the same thing from you guys like and i think you guys you probably don't feel as uh you know comfortable giving that kind of feedback to me as I would want you to, but sometimes it's just truth as anybody, you know, like, look, I'm probably not going to tell somebody higher up in the company exactly what I think when I might some, somebody else, I don't know, but it's a thing to strive to. I don't know. I think obviously some people are not going to do that, but I think to me, what I've always felt like I've been able to do is give honest feedback in a polite manner in a way that like, Hey, this, these are my thoughts and why they might work or, Hey, you know, you probably, you might have some good reasons why they might not work. And I think you, you engage people in a way that allows them to give you that feedback in a polite manner and like, kind of understand, Hey, you know, the thing, and I always, I think that's, that's one thing that caught me early on with you when I first started to get into those meetings after I became a full-time employee. And, and is that like, you're, you're willing to hear people out, you know what I mean? Even if you don't agree and, and that's okay, but you're, you're willing to hear people out. And I 
that's a that's a culture that's been ingrained in the people that work for Peterson's, and I think that's really important. It's where, well, I hope listeners are hearing this. You know, it's just a it's just a couple of guys that work together and want Peterson's to be the best it can be, and want the people of Peterson's to be the best it can be. Talking about that, like, what is the reality of it? What has tr- turned out? You know, we're trying to grow our team. We're trying to find some people to fill some holes as we go to the next level. Those people we've interviewed have found so much value in listening to these conversations. It's the one thing that makes me excited about the podcast. Maybe no consumer ever listens to it, but future employees may listen to it. And as you go, let's say, for example, if you were to go somewhere else, you could say, hey, you want to know about my job? <laughs> go Listen, me and Neil talked about it. You can totally learn about it. Go listen to it. And I would love for that to be there. But I, you're right. Like we, we want to keep everybody as long as they are happy, growing, and in the place in life they want to be. And the second they want to be somewhere else, we want to help them, help them get there. And now that's scary. And that's easy to say because, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of value in tenure people that just have experience in your business for for time because they understand the politic politics of it the the way things work you know, i think it can be i mean i had this you know when i worked at, at whole foods and stuff so like it's hard to let people go sometimes especially if they're great people but like there's like a fatherly pride of like watching them go blossom in their career and become bigger. I mean, I had that, I had a lot of guys who were my assistant managers at Whole Foods that went on to become team leaders or even higher in the company at Whole Foods. And I'm so proud of them. And when they, you know, text me or email me to this day and tell me I got promoted past a, a position that I had tried to get at the thing, I'm just like, there's pride there. I don't, I feel no kind of ill will. It's all like a, like awesome. That, that was good time spent in my life. You know, you never get the time back. That's it's just going by all the time. You never get to add more. And that, that feels like good time spent. I don't know. What else have we not covered a topic that we need to talk about retail, digital retail marketing. I mean, just touch on that. <laughs> yeah. It's such an interesting world today because I mean, I talked about how I had graduated and then, in 2008, which is later than I should have graduated because I had, you know, a lot of fun in college, let's say. And, uh, um, but in 2008, like that world didn't exist. And today it's just so different. And I mean, things like Instacart or anybody else's digital platforms on how they buy their groceries. And, and, uh, you would, like you mentioned earlier, COVID had an impact on everything in there. Well, the, obviously the biggest impact is on how people buy their food these days, right? And so the, I mean, is it, it's not just grocery stores, it's e-commerce sites, it's Amazon, it's, you know, Costco online, it's all these places. And, you know, we're in a lot of these places, but the, it's just, it's changed the world. And then, and then how you deal with those things that you put on those websites too, and how you manage all those things and the, the, the pictures and the, spec sheets and the you know all the, the the sizes and how big the pallets are everything all that information that needs to go to retailers or to e-commerce sites and and how you manage that data it's just such a ever-changing world and and you know it's pretty fast paced and something's changing all the time and, and as a company as we grow we we really you know we're doing our best to wrap our brains around it and take advantage use leverage those things to successful opportunities for us yeah. so. I think if you're listening and you own a business in the food sector, better for you sector, I don't know why I'm saying sector, niche, you know, you need a guy like Ben 24 (laughs) seven paying attention to this ever changing digital media. Like you'll go into retailers these days and there's, they don't even want to talk about coupons or, a lot of the old things we would do, I say old, th- they're not even old. Like just the <laughs> right, other day, right. we, we use these, <laughs> right. these tools to bring attention to our products. Well, now it's a whole new set of tools and it's all digital. It's all, I'm trying to come up with a, th- 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 there's kind of a name for it. Maybe it is digital media. 
I don't know, but these, I mean, it's a marketing and it's, you know, you've talked about this a lot, but the idea that marketing and sales have to be joined to the hip. And I feel like, you know, when you go into these meetings with retailers, they're telling you, yeah, we need the in-store promos and things like that, but we need coverage on our digital platforms too. And, And, and if we have to say it too, like sometimes you're in front of a buyer who doesn't even know that they have a digital uh, presence and because they've maybe, you know, I I don't know, maybe that's that's not where their expertise lies. And that's okay. I mean, like, you know, like I, as an old me guy, I have the same situation, right? Like I'm something I've had to wrap my brain around. And when you have to wrap your brain around a million other things at a store and you're a buyer, the idea of also trying to figure out the digital platform, that's a challenging thing. It can be it difficult feels for them really to even foreign, think about. Yeah. yeah, it can feel really foreign. Like, what's a banner ad? You know, like, what is a banner right. ad? What does well, that mean? I'm incredibly sympathetic to those points, people, because I was in that world and I understand. And, and uh, I mean, I think, you know, I think if you're not showing those things off, you're doing in those, right? You, you're, you're shortchanging yourself as a company. And I feel like we, you know, we try to tell these companies, Hey, we're doing these things for you and with you to help you grow and us grow. And it's a great partnership. And I think they value that certainly. And now it's become just part of the deal. Like we right. to do it. So yep. it, it's, it's slowly, if not already a part of every conversation, like we're even, we even talk about it like this, Ben, you have to go on every sales call, right? <laughs> because that sales and marketing piece of our business has to really be working in tandem to, to, I mean, cause consumers 90%, I don't know, this, that's a number I just pulled out of the air, but a large percentage of their buying decisions are made before they ever leave the house or take their eyes up from their phone. I mean, there's so many perfect examples of that, right? Like, I mean, let's use Tesla as an example. Sure. Right. Like they don't, advertise they don't sell in a store like you have to order your car online from them and so you've made that like the only way to make that decision is to do it online before you purchase right and then wait for them to build it for you i mean that's a good example of a like you make a hundred percent of that that decision before you get the you go to get the car right and um and i mean i think you can find that everywhere is like when you go to buy a big ticket item these days or even a small ticket item you're doing research you're figuring out the thing you're not talking to a salesperson at a best buy or at a king supers or any kind of grocery store heb right you're you're making a lot of those decisions before you even walk into the store so if you don't have that presence you are definitely behind you know that's right folks this is what it's all about to me i'm so glad if you've listened this far you've got to hear just me and Ben talk and and hear a little bit about his story and where he came from and how he plays a role at Peterson's in making us what we are and, and who we are. Uh, you know, tell a friend if you enjoyed the episode. I know Ben knows I'm I'm like a shameless promoter about this thing all the time. Hi on YouTube. Thank you for watching. If you're watching, Ben, hug those kiddos and we'll do. Thanks for coming on here. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it.